Hello and welcome to Community College News, the show where New Brunswick Community College journalism students bring you stories that affect New Brunswickers. I'm Mike Trusiak. In today's show, we look at the effects of the spring thaw on you and your roads. And later, renowned author Terry Fallis visits Woodstock. But first, with the recent increase in temperature, many rivers in New Brunswick have reached flood stage. The spring breakup this year has caused some river to rise above normal levels. At the NBCC Woodstock campus, the Mandukesnakeg River has completely engulfed the parking lot, forcing students and staff to find alternative parking. Police have still not laid charges in connection with an arson that destroyed an apartment building on Woodstock's First Nation. The fire broke out only 11 hours after a truck smashed into the structure. As Ethan W. Hazlitt reports, that incident has led to charges. Woodstock's fire department was called to the apartment building Tuesday, March 20th. There was little firefighters could do to save the structure. Upon arrival, it was fully engulfed, and our main concern at the time upon arrival was to protect the exposures as the daycare behind us and the neighbor's house. Shocked by the shrieking sirens, neighbors poured down the street to see what had happened. Well, I was in my house feeding my daughter and heard sirens. Oh, my mom said, yeah, I'll go see what that is. I look out the door and there's a huge fire. A few houses down from my house. The building was already scheduled to be torn down, leading firefighters to think it was not an accident. At this time, yeah, it's very, yeah, it's a uh, it's very suspicious fire at this time. The day started out like any other for residents at the building, but quickly turned into a bizarre series of events. Police say a truck driven by an impaired driver crashed into the side, causing major damage. According to the RCMP, the driver was allegedly assaulted by two men before the crash. No charges have been laid yet in connection with the fire, but one man has been charged with assault. RCMP are looking for a second assault suspect. Police, the fire department and the fire marshal are still investigating the fire to find out who was responsible. In Woodstock, Ethan Hazlitt, Community College News. With spring here, many people are excited for the warmer weather, but with it comes melting snow and rising water levels, which in turn can damage homes and businesses. Jillian Trainer has more. Spring is officially here, and along with plenty of sunshine comes rising waters. Anyone who lives or owns a business near the river will be at risk of flooding with possible damage to their property. We were able to get in the driveway, but 10 feet from the driveway, it was shut, shut off, shut down. Because Paul Belfontaine has lived on Water Street for three years. Though not in the river's flood zone, he and his wife have had trouble with flooding from Connell Street. We did have uh, flooding in the back here, which was quite uh, aggressive a couple of times. Thought we flooded out, but it never did. It kind of went to the side here. Belfontaine recorded this video of one of the instances his backyard was flooded. Harold McClellan has owned home hardware since 1992, but has worked there 33 years. The worst flooding at the store happened in 1987. That year, ice and floodwaters were so bad, they almost reached the main floor. Down here in the basement, there are markers with dates to show the year of the flood, as well as how high the water level reached. McClellan says that over the years they have learned what to do in order to reduce the risk of damage to property and inventory. We try not to have a lot of things downstairs, but uh, you move as much as you can and hope that uh, everything goes your way. To keep track of any flooding in your area, you can check out the Government of New Brunswick's River Watch. For information on what to do during and after a flood, go to getprepared.gc.ca. In Woodstock, Jillian Trainer, Community College News. Coming soon on JSchool NBCC, a special series of our documentaries. On Tuesday, March 27th, Facing the Fire, A Piece of History Lost, a documentary on Sackville's Foundry Fire. We received a call around 6.30 that evening that indicated that we had a structure fire. I noticed the flames shoot out from right over there. And I said, well, oh my God, the foundry's on fire. Rising rivers, sunburns, and mud aren't the only things weighing on New Brunswickers' minds. After a winter of icy roads, potholes are showing up on your local roads. Jeff Stairs has more. With the arrival of spring, relief from a long winter can finally set in. But enjoying the warmer weather isn't always smooth sailing. 
Potholes and broken asphalt are making for a bumpy ride for motorists. Franklin Lemaitre says the rough roads have wreaked havoc on his vehicle. They're very bad and it's getting very expensive to fix the front end of my vehicle because of it. Uh, ball joints, tie rods, because of the potholes. Can't avoid them all, unfortunately. Yeah. Especially from Dairy Queen to Main Street on Connell is very bad. Very bad. Uh, they've tried to fix them, but the stuff that they put in just comes right back out again. So, With melting snow, ice and flooding, anyone who spends a lot of time on the road knows the damage that can be caused by potholes. This car here, I think they put struts on it in November and it's already running very rough again. So. It's just because of the beating and banging over the roads. A spokesperson for the Department of Transportation told us that winter has taken a specially hard toll on roads and that the spring is a busy season for road repairs. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. There may be a few more bumps in the MBCC Woodstock campus parking lot come spring. The college is requesting the installation of speed bumps. Michael McDonald has more. Speed bumps like these are very effective in controlling the flow of traffic outside this Woodstock retail. The risk of being struck by a car is reduced when drivers are forced to slow down. That's why NBCC Woodstock asked the town to install speed bumps in their parking lot. The campus does not own any of the parking lot. It's owned by the town and uh, administered by the town or, or they provide all the oversight for it. So uh, I put together a Based upon the request that came to me, uh, a request through to town council for some consideration on their end. Marshall said safety was their biggest concern. Uh, sometimes if cars are traveling too fast, there is a potential safety risk there. So, If the town installed speed bumps, they'd have to be removed for snow removal during the winter months. The college is now awaiting the town's decision. Uh, the letter that was received from the college uh, requesting speed bumps for the entrance uh, to and from the college was referred to the uh, town's public works committee. So that committee has not met yet, and uh, when they do, they'll be uh, reviewing the, uh, the proposal. Harding said this proposal is not considered urgent, and it could be several weeks before the committee meets. In Woodstock, Michael McDonald, Community College News. Coming soon to the J School website, a multimedia documentary about the challenges facing the town of Juniper. Um, I'm gonna miss that we're gonna, hmm, we're gonna miss like our classrooms because our classrooms are like small and stuff so we don't have no problem of finding our staff and stuff. Started here in grade 8 and uh, continued on until I graduated. Then I came back here to teach and I taught here I think around 21 years. Renowned Canadian author Terry Fallis has helped Woodstock get closer to its dream of an expanded library. Fallis read from his book at the recent fundraiser in the town and our Tony Bourgeois was there. Woodstock readers gathered for an opportunity to hear what they've the been reading. Was priceless as she first laid eyes on her Many here have read Best Laid Plans by author Terry Fallis. At this event, organized by Deputy Mayor Kathleen Sutherland, people got to hear Fallis read directly from his book. The excerpts from the book would have seemed familiar. As part of Woodstock Reads What Canada Reads campaign, people in this town have committed to reading his book. When Sutherland contacted the author for information, she was surprised when he agreed to come to Woodstock. People paid twenty dollars toward the library expansion in, and to meet I him. I would say twenty-four hours. I had a response from him saying, uh, "Not only will I come, but I'm not going to take any money from you. I will come in support of your local library." So it's wonderful. Yeah. People attending the reading by the award-winning author included MP Mike Allen and Mayor Arthur Slip. People we'll turn out here tonight, and the fact that uh, Terry has come to support the expansion of the library certainly means a lot to the community. Paulus answered questions from the crowd and signed autographs. Right, uh, a great audience, and they most of them had read. I could tell from their reaction to my talk and from the reading that many of them had read the book, which is always a thrill when a writer can be in a room where people have actually read their book. Uh, so it was uh, it was an honor. I really enjoyed it, and the questions were good, and we had a we had a good time. I certainly did. The night closed, presenting Phallus with a gift basket filled uh, with Woodstock and Carlton uh, County made goods. In 2014, it will be the 100th anniversary of the L.P. Fisher Library. Kathleen Sutherland hopes that during that year, we will have another Woodstock Reads event to make that celebration even better. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News.
Fire has destroyed many historical buildings across New Brunswick over the years, but one community is working to preserve its history. Jocelyn Turner has more. Sackville, New Brunswick is usually a quiet town with a history of major losses by fire. Recently, the town lost one of its oldest buildings, the Foundry to Fire. Charlie Scobie is the chair of Sackville's Heritage Board. It is concerned about preserving the town's historical buildings. Since um, well, last year, really, one of our main uh, functions is the administration of the new town of Sackville Heritage Bylaw. Since the bylaw's inception, it has designated two main historical conservation areas, one on Bridge Street, the beginning of York and some of Main Street, the second near the top of York Street. The bylaw is focused on the exterior of these buildings. What we want to ensure is that any alterations and especially additions are in keeping with the heritage area of, of the rest of the properties. Sackville has already lost many of his historical buildings. In 2006, this whole structure burned down and was later rebuilt. But there are some owners who are trying to keep their old buildings in good condition. It's more just being aware of uh, particularly electrical. Barry Dane has owned the Marshlands Inn for 12 years. The building was originally built in the mid-1800s. In order to expand his business, Dane had to make some changes to not only the outside of the building, but also the inside. Although it's the original electrical system within it, we have uh, added, where we have increased the load, added uh, new electrical, and we've reduced the load on the older uh, knob and tube wiring. Dane says that as an owner of an older historic building, he must follow the bylaws drafted by the Heritage Board and approved by Council. He also has to make sure the changes made on the interior create a safe environment and yet keep up a modern feel. In Sackville, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. That's our show for today. If you have an interesting story idea, email us at jschoolnbcc at gmail.com. For more of our work, visit us at jschoolnbcc.ca. Thanks for watching.